ICT NCERT presents audio book introductory macroeconomics page 48 module 3.2 determination of equilibrium income rationale macroeconomic equilibrium is helpful to ensure stability in the economy and achieve economic growth which can add to living standard of an individual and social well-being page 49 key concepts savings investments equilibrium income investment multiplier inflationary gap deflationary cap 3.2.1 determination of equilibrium income equilibrium occurs when there is no tendency for income to change unless there is some change in either aggregate demand ad or aggregate supply as or both on the supply side as is identical to y on the demand side ad is identical to y to achieve the equilibrium position it is required that as equal ad as is equal to y is equal to c plus s ad is equal to y equal to c plus i it follows that at equilibrium c plus s is equal to c plus i therefore at equilibrium i is equal to s as mentioned earlier savings is what is left after the households have decided on how much to consume the investment decisions are taken by firms so there is no reason to expect that the plans of households match with the plans of firms for the equilibrium to occur to repeat actual savings are identical to actual investments always plan savings equal planned investments but only at equilibrium when households plan to consume more and save less planned savings fall below planned investment as a result inventories fall below the planned level to increase the inventories firms will hire more factors this will expand output and income of the households who will now consume more but their increase in consumption will be less than the increase in income so the savings will increase the gap between actual and planned investment will start narrowing the process will keep repeating itself till the gap between planned and actual investment is eliminated in contrast if households consume less and save more planned savings will rise above the planned investment as a result inventories will accumulate beyond the planned levels to reduce unwanted inventories firms will decrease their production until planned savings become equal to planned investment this process is illustrated in figure 3.8 page 50 figure 3.8 process of adjustment of savings and investments there are two sections of a flow chart the left indicates how planned savings that is when they are less than planned investment lead to fall in inventories and the resulting consequences the right hand side looks at the situation where planned savings are greater than planned investments and inventories accumulate we will look at the left hand side first we will discuss the left hand side first when planned savings are less than planned investment inventories fall the arrow leads to firms hire more factors output rises income increases the arrow then leads to consumption increases but less than increase in income this arrow leads to savings increase investment increase this arrow then indicates that process repeats itself till planned s is equal to planned i on the right hand side when planned savings are greater than planned investment inventories accumulate the arrow indicates leading up to firms reduce factors output falls income decreases 
the arrow then leads up to consumption decreases but less than decrease in income. This arrow then leads up to savings decrease, investment decrease. The final arrow leads to the indicator that process repeats itself till planned S is equal to planned I. Numerical example 1. Let us reconsider the outlands consumption function. Aggregate demand now becomes the sum of consumption and investment. Let investment be rupees 40. I equals 40. C equals 100 plus 0 0.8 Y. AD equals 40 plus 100 plus 0 0.8 Y which equals 140 plus 0 0.8 Y. Table 3.4 calculates C, S and AD for different levels of income. Notice that I and S are equal. I equals S equals 40. When income Y equals 700, this will be the equilibrium income. At this income, firms plan to invest rupees 40 and households plan to save rupees 40. So all plans match up. Table 3.4 Determining Equilibrium Income This table has 6 columns and 6 rows. The first column indicates Y. The second column indicates C. The third column indicates I. The fourth column indicates S. The fifth column indicates C plus S and the sixth column indicates AD equals C plus I. In the first row, Y is 300, C 340, I is 40, S minus 40, C plus S 300, AD 380. In the second row, Y is 400, C 420, I is 40, S minus 20, C plus S 400 and AD equals 460. In the third row, Y is 500, C 500, I 40, S becomes 0, C plus S 500 and AD equals 540. In the fourth row, Y equals 600, C 580, I is 40, S 20. C plus S equals 600 and AD is 620. In the fifth row, we find that Y is 700, C is 660, I is 40, S is 40. C plus S equals 700 and AD equals 700. In the last row, Y is 800, C 740, I 40, S 60. C plus S equals 800 and AD is 780. Page 51. 3.2.2 Equilibrium Income A Graphical Representation Figure 3.9 Graphical Representation of Equilibrium Income Figure 3.9 graphically represents the equilibrium income. We have placed the income on the x-axis and aggregate demand on the y-axis. Remember that along a 45 degree line through the origin, the x-coordinate is equal to the y-coordinate. Thus, equilibrium will always lie on this line. Given any AD curve, the equilibrium will be where the 45 degree line intersects the AD curve. y0 is the equilibrium income which is equal to AD0. That is, the aggregate demand at equilibrium level. That is, the aggregate demand at equilibrium level. At a level of income less than Y0, for example Y1, the aggregate demand AD1 is greater than Y1. Planned savings are less than planned investment. So, income will tend to rise. Thus, it is not an equilibrium condition. At a level of income Y2, which is greater than Y0, aggregate demand AD2 is less than Y0.
plant savings are more than plant investments and hence income will tend to fall this is not an equilibrium condition either figure 3.9 graphical representation of equilibrium income here we have a graph on the x axis is represented income with the help of the symbol y on the y axis we have aggregate demand denoted by ad there is a dotted line which is at a 45 degree angle from the x axis this line represents the statement y is equal to as there is an upward sloping line which indicates ad is equal to c plus i this line begins from i plus c bar both these lines intersect at a point denoted by e e is the equilibrium 3.2.3 changes in income and multiplier income will change from the equilibrium level if aggregate demand changes this will occur if any of the following changes happen 1 the consumption function changes point 1 either c bar changes point 2 or small b changes point 3 or c bar and small b both change 2 investment function changes page 52 consumption is determined by the consumer behavior and we do not expect it to change rapidly therefore we concentrate on what happens if the investment changes numerical example 2 let i change from i is equal to 40 to i dash equals 60 i dash equals 60 c is equal to 100 plus 0.8 y ad equals 60 plus 100 Plus zero point eight y, which equals one sixty plus zero point eight y. Table three point five calculates C, S, and A D for different levels of income, with an investment of rupees sixty. Now, notice that I and S are no longer equal when income Y is equal to seven hundred. At this income, firms plan to invest rupees sixty, but households plan to save. Rupees forty, so plans of households and firms do not match. Comparing values in Table three point four with those in Table three point five, can you trace the sequence of changes that have taken place now? Planned savings equal the new level of planned investment at income y equals eight hundred. This is the new level of equilibrium income. Table three point five. determining equilibrium income with a change in investment at i dash equals 60 this table has six columns and seven rows the first column indicates y the second c the third i dash the fourth s the fifth c plus s and the sixth ad equals c plus i dash row 1 why Is four hundred C four twenty I dash sixty S minus twenty C plus S equals four hundred A D is four eighty Row two Y five hundred C five hundred I dash sixty S is zero C plus S equals five hundred A D equals five sixty Third row Y Is six hundred C five forty I dash sixty S is twenty C plus S equals six hundred A D equals six forty Row four Y is seven hundred C is six sixty I dash sixty S forty C plus S equals seven hundred A D equals seven twenty The fifth row. Y is eight hundred C seven forty I dash sixty S sixty C plus S is eight hundred and C plus I dash which is A D is eight hundred. Please note that this is the new level of equilibrium income. 
the sixth row y is 900 c 820 i dash 60 s 80 c plus s equals 900 ad is 880 in the final row y is 1000 c 900 i dash 60 s equals 100 c plus s equals 1000 and ad equals 960 The new level of planned investment is rupees sixty. Household save rupees sixty when income is rupees eight hundred. Therefore, the new level of equilibrium income is rupees eight hundred. Note that an increase in investment of rupees twenty has generated an increase in income of rupees hundred. Figure three point ten represents the change in the level of equilibrium income due to change in investment. If investment rises from I to I dash, AD curve will shift upward from AD to AD dash. This upward shift causes equilibrium level of income to increase from Y to Y dash. Page fifty-three, Figure three point ten, Effect of increase in investment on equilibrium income. There is a graph with two axes. The x-axis represents income, y. The y-axis represents aggregate demand, AD. At a 45-degree angle from the x-axis is a dotted line which rises upward from point of origin. This represents y is equal to AS. Two points plotted on the y-axis, AD1 and AD2. The gap between them represents I1. There is an upward sloping line from AD1 on y axis there is an upward rising line this represents AD1 is equal to C plus I from point AD2 on the y axis there is an upward rising line and this represents AD2 is equal to C plus I1 3.2.4 investment multiplier The ratio of change in income to the change in investment is called the investment multiplier. In our example, delta y is equal to hundred, delta i is equal to twenty. Investment multiplier is equal to delta y by delta i, which is equal to hundred by twenty, which is equal to five. The investment multiplier tells us how much income will change. For a given change in the investment, recall that MPS is equal to delta S by delta Y. At equilibrium, planned I is equal to planned S. Therefore, at the new equilibrium level, delta I is equal to delta S. It follows that MPS is equal to delta I by delta Y at the new equilibrium level. So. We can say that the investment multiplier is equal to delta y by delta i, which is equal to one by m p s, which is equal to one by one minus m p c. Page fifty-four. As considered in the previous example, since m p s is equal to zero point two, the value of the investment multiplier is one by zero point two. Which is equal to five. If planned investment goes up by rupees thirty, income will increase by thirty multiplied by five, which is equal to one fifty. If we wish to increase income by rupees two hundred, we will need to increase planned investment by two hundred by five, which is equal to forty. How much should the investment increase if we want income to go up by rupees? Three hundred. Three point two point five. Full employment income. Full employment income is that level of income where all factors of production are fully employed in the production process. Recall that we had described equilibrium simply as a state of rest. Equilibrium does not signify full employment of resources by itself. but it signifies that the level of income in the economy will not change even if there is unemployment in the economy 
in the numerical example 1, the equilibrium income is rupees 700. Suppose Outland has 15 workers, each of whom produces output of worth rupees 50. It takes only 14 workers to produce goods worth rupees 700. So, we can say that one worker is unemployed. Employing him will mean that output increases to rupees 750. But this increased income cannot be an equilibrium level of income for Outland as long as its consumption and investment functions remain unchanged. Given the consumption function, C is equal to 100 plus 0.8Y as taken in example 1 and the investment function as I equals 40, the economy would settle only at an income level of rupees 700. For unemployment to be removed from outland, either C or I will have to be changed. As previously explained, since C cannot change rapidly, hence we expect I to change. Then, how much should be the new level of I? For achieving the equilibrium income at the full employment level, AD must be exactly equal to AS at the full employment level. At the full employment level, let AD be ADF and AS be ASF. Then the economy will be in equilibrium only when ADF equals ASF. In our example, since one worker produces output of rupees 50, ASF is rupees 750 and ADF is also rupees 750. If AD is less than ADF, aggregate demand is insufficient to support full employment level. The difference between potential output and the actual level of output at the full employment level is called the deflationary gap. Hence, it is the difference between AD and ADF at the full employment income. Consider example 1, where the income level is rupees 750 in the economy. AD equals C plus I equals 100 plus 0 0.8 into 750 plus 40, which equals 740. Page 55 Rupees 740 is less than rupees 750, which is the aggregate demand at the full employment level. Thus, there exists a deflationary gap of rupees 10, that is 750 minus 740. Figure 3.11 illustrates the deflationary gap at income level Y1, where Y1 is less than YF. Figure 3.11 Deflationary Gap There are two axes. The y-axis represents aggregate demand AD and the x-axis represents income Y. Plotted on the y-axis are two points, AD1 and ADO. There is a dotted line which is at a 45 degree angle from the x-axis which is an upward rising line. This represents AS is equal to Y. The line rising from point AD1 represents AD1 is equal to C1 plus I1. The point ADO rises in an upward line and represents ADO is equal to CO plus IO. The points of intersection between the dotted line AS is equal to Y with the lines ADO and AD1 are represented as E1 and EO. That is the deflationary gap as well. On the other hand, the amount by which the actual output exceeds the potential output at the full employment level is called the inflationary gap. Thus, AD at full employment level, that is ADF, is greater than AD in this case. Consider the economy in example 2, where AD is rupees 750 at the full employment level. AD equals C plus I, which equals 100 plus 0 
into 750 plus 60, which equals 760. Rupees 760 is more than rupees 750, which is the aggregate demand at the full employment level. Thus, there exists an inflationary gap of rupees 10, 760 minus 750. Figure 3.12 depicts the inflationary gap at income level Y2, where Y2 is greater than YF. Figure 3.12 Inflationary Gap There is a graph with two axes. The X axis represents income Y and the Y axis represents aggregate demand AD. At an angle of 45 degrees from the X axis, there is an upward rising line. This dotted line represents AS is equal to Y and starts at the point of origin. Plotted on the Y axis are two points, AD 0 and AD 1. The upward rising line from AD 0 represents AD 0 is equal to C0 plus I0. The upward rising line from AD1 represents AD1 equals C1 plus I1. The points of intersection between these two lines and the dotted line are represented as E0 and E1. The distance between these two is known as the inflationary gap. Please note that whenever there is an increase from AD0 to AD1, there is a corresponding increase in Y0 to Y1. Test your understanding. 1. In an economy, the marginal propensity to consume is 0 0.6. What is the marginal propensity to save? What is the investment multiplier? 2. Referring to the information given in question 1, if investment is rupees 100, then calculate the equilibrium income. Module 3 ends here. Happy listening! You were just listening to this chapter. Subject Coordinator Dr. Jaya Singh Production Assistant Jagbandhu Jana Sound Recordist Batilang Lindo and Vikas Sangwan Artists Anandana Kapoor and Akash Ahuja Produced by Vimlesh Chaudhary and presented by CIET NCERT New Delhi India. <laughs> <laughs>